Thank you, everybody, for waiting. I appreciate it. Um, as Tessa said, my name is Audra Montenegro. I am going to teach you a little bit about the cloud native community impact, show you some statistics, and how to get started in the cloud native ecosystem. So who am I anyway? So I am the community program manager for two programs specifically, the KCDs and also the cloud native community groups, which kind of go hand in hand together in terms of events and building around your community. Um, I actually started with CNCF in June of 2022. Um, and previously, I was with O'Reilly Media for over seven years doing global events. So I worked with them mainly on the content for their events, directly with the program committee and the program chairs. Uh, some of you might recognize Kelsey Hightower up at the top. He's the one who bootstrapped the Kubernetes community back at Google before it was donated to CNCF. And um, he became a principal engineer and now he is kind of doing his independent thing and speaking all over the world. And so um, I also had the pleasure of meeting Priyanka Sharma back when she was a speaker at O'Reilly's open source conference, OzCon. Um, for those of you who don't know Priyanka, she is the executive director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. All right, so who is CNCF anyway? Well, we, are, we were founded in 2015 under the Linux Foundation umbrella. So um, we, have, we house many projects that are all vendor neutral and um, our goal is to make cloud native ubiquitous and sustain the, the cloud native ecosystem by bringing together people at um, large events like KubeCon and Cloud NativeCon or the Open Source Summit. Um, and what does cloud native mean? So I know a lot of you are pretty advanced here, but I had that question at the table outside. So let me just give you a brief overview. So um, cloud native empowers organizations to be resilient um, scale their applications and work on public, private, or hybrid clouds. It also allows your engineers to be, um, to iterate quickly and be innovative. Uh, why should your organization adopt cloud native? Again, there's that resiliency that I told you about. Um, also the um, multi-cloud as well. And then better yet is the um, development velocity, that's honestly the best one. Um, but some people don't even have an OSPO, so an open source program office. And if you'd like to convince your uh, organization to have one, then this website, todogroup.org, is a great place to start. So how do we make innovations accessible at CNCF? Well, we have a technical oversight committee. These are folks that are leading um, the technical leaders who basically oversee the projects. We have 172 projects right now, so they make sure to oversee the health of the projects, and then they also um, allow them to graduate or advance. And then we have our governing board that's more of the business side, right, that takes care of marketing and finance. Um, then we have our memberships with over, or with 809 members to date at um, platinum, gold, and silver, which makes the majority of our memberships. We also have academic, nonprofit, and user supporter. And then our ambassadors. So um, we love our ambassadors because they are an extension of CNCF. They make uh, cloud native ubiquitous by being scattered all across the world. And we actually have seven of them here at this event. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> So as I mentioned, um, we have 172 projects. These are all vendor neutral projects. So they start from sandbox to incubating and they go to graduated. And um, as I mentioned, the technical oversight committee is the one to make sure that they sustain. Um, and if they don't, they're unhealthy, then they're under review and sometimes unfortunately get archived. So I'd like to continue on to some fun statistics. Um, for those of you who don't know what a commit is, I'm sure most of you in this room do, but if you don't, raise your hand. Okay, great. So you all know how to submit a commit, but this is basically the statistics on Linux Foundation projects. Um, so 12 was the highest in 2022, then it was 11 last year in terms of committers. And then um, at seven this year, but you still have 10 months to go, so I think you're doing all right. 
Um, and then it's just cool to see where you are in place of the other countries and then ahead of 40 other countries that have commits. Now in terms of CNCF specific projects, the committers are a little less. So you're at five, but thankfully the trajectory is that upward trajectory that we like to see. Um, but you're even more ahead of other countries this way uh, with CNCF projects. The number I like to look at is actually contributions. So this is not just technical or commits to code. This is actually contributions to any CNCF repository. KCDs have a repository. CNCGs have a repository. Uh, Cloud Native Glossary has a repository. So um, you have eight contributors from Mexico that contribute towards a CNCF ecosystem repository. And you're ahead of 55 other countries. <laughs> All right, this is also a cool statistic that one of our ambassadors was curious about, so I added it last minute. But um, in terms of certifications, um, you have 91 certified Kubernetes administrators in Mexico, 37 um, certified Kubernetes application developers, 20 Kubernetes um, cloud native administrators, and it looks like there aren't any certified Kubernetes security specialists. Um, if anybody's interested in getting a certification, we have a 25% discount code on all of them. So I highly encourage you to take advantage of that. So I'm just gonna pause, let you take your photos. <laughs> But honestly, look, Mexico is in second place in compared to certifications. Not that it's a race, it's just a little bit of perspective. Brazil is way up there. <laughs> but you know, it's kind of cool to see you know, some of these are um, nearly on par with each other. And um, you could see that the CKS is um, non-existent across a lot of Latin American countries. All right, so enough about statistics. How do you start contributing? Like I said, there are 172 projects. Um, if you have a project that you're looking to open source, you can submit it via this GitHub link and it can be under review, the Technical Oversight Committee, um, to see if it'll go to the sandbox level, which as you can see is the majority of our projects. Um, and then they evolve all the way up to graduated. I like this website, Clotributor, Clo for Cloud Native, Tributor for Contributor, so clotributor.dev. It's kind of like a job board for projects. Um, so basically you could find opportunities here, technical or non-technical, with different projects that um, might need your contributions. So um, this is kind of a nice place if you don't know where to start. Just take a look at the opportunities and say, hey, I have those skills, I can contribute. And as Edith Kukla mentioned in her talk just about an hour ago, we have mentorship programs. So um, Outreachy is one of them. That's actually a paid internship program um, that we highlight. And then also there's uh, Google Summer of Code and the Linux Foundation has its own mentorship program. So if you need further guidance, um, the opportunity is there to connect with other mentors who are innovators in the industry, really, and then build your network. I mean, honestly, it's, it's really about networking, and connecting with those people who have already been kind of further along in their cloud native journey. Um, and then some of these have um, initiatives, or I should say, you know, stipends, other incentives, if you, you know, want to get paid, like the outreachy one. Um, but it's very dependent on the program, um, as well as the project. All right, community events, this is my specialty. So this is a great place to start because like I said, it's about expanding your network, kind of exploring with those who are coming to teach you something um, and learn exactly where you want to start. And then from there, go to workshops, go to larger events. Um, but maybe it's a community group that's just one to two hour meetup in your local area. So we do have those. Um, and then of course, once you get to a point where you feel like you have something to teach, 
share, please do, because we can't get enough submissions in terms of KCDs and also via community groups as well. Um, your experience is so valuable and it's nice to, even if you're new in the, the ecosystem, just to show up on stage and then you'll influence somebody else to kind of do the same thing or at least start on the path. So specifically, our program focuses on city chapters. Um, we, we do have umbrellas of countries in terms of cloud native community groups. This is, needs to be a collaboration and an agreement among the, the chapters within the country to come together and be under that umbrella. But it's kind of nice to form different strategies and initiatives to um, enable the local community. I know that we have um, a lot in LATAM that are really building out training for people to get certified. And this is people contributing their free time to you know, take one piece of the training along a seven day um, course that they're just giving for free. And this is all through the community group program. Um, I can't stress enough the vendor neutrality. So what does that mean? It just means that we ask for people to not pitch products, services, um, and you're really just talking about open source and or cloud native technology that's free to use for everybody. And then be inclusive. No matter what level of expertise you're at, beginner, intermediate, advanced, um, we definitely encourage our community groups to be welcoming to everybody. Um, and then also, no matter what your demographic background is as well, our values are very solid in the sense that we um, promote people just to be welcome to everybody. There's, there should be no reason to turn away somebody unless they're going against the code of conduct in terms of inappropriateness, et cetera. And then collaborative, that's the whole point of community, right? Working together. Um, so there's you know, nothing territorial about it. You always wanna welcome people who would like to donate their time to something like a community group or a project. Um, it's open source, that's the nature of it. So some statistics on how our community groups are doing. Um, doesn't look like a lot compared to what we have. We actually have 428 global groups, but 191 or more are active. What does that mean? So we actually just came up with a new term that we ask that each, um, well, it's new as of last year. Each community group has a meetup every 90 days. Um, this doesn't have to be in person. It could be virtual. We have a virtual platform that supports you. Um, it could also be co-hosted, which is nice too. So if you're co-hosting with maybe a neighboring city, um, then you can keep your activity level that way as well. All right, so KCDs. Uh, this is actually where I started in 2022 with CNCF. Um, KCDs though started in 2021. El Salvador was the first one and it was virtual in January um, and they had 150 virtual attendees and um, that year they had 12 total KCDs, all virtual. And then in 2022, 16 KCDs, some were going in person. And then 2023, we nearly doubled the amount. So 32 KCDs last year, the majority in person. Um, and then we just had two KCDs prior to this one. So one in Norway, one in um, Kerala, India. And so that leaves a total of 62 completed over the course of three years. So obviously Guadalajara is happening now. Sao Paulo, Brazil is also happening now. <laughs> and um, they're virtual today, but they're gonna be in person tomorrow. And then Costa Rica is around the corner. Um, they're also virtual and in person. So if you can't make the trek uh, or the travel, then I would highly suggest attending virtually. It's a free event too, so. Um, then Lima, Peru, um, shout out to Edith here. They're going to be hosting an in-person event in July, um, and it's also free to attend. Oh yeah, we're using Sessionize now, which I'm super proud of. We were using a painful platform before for CFPs called SM Apply, so 
Anyway, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Sessionize, but this is the whole list of open CFPs if you're interested in exploring. And I have to give a shout out to Katie Greenlee. If you're an ambassador in the room, you know who she is. Um, so she actually runs all of the community programs at CNCF. Um, she came from the Linux Foundation with over 10 years of experience and she's built some awesome processes and structure around the ambassador program that we really needed last year. Um, so she kind of holds people to the standards of excellence. And um, actually, the, the call for ambassadors is currently open and it's open until March 10th. What's really cool is we have some great ambassadors out there that have been doing just great things and giving to the community consistently. So she's recognizing them without making them resubmit um, and kind of carrying on their term, so to speak. But a, a term is typically one year for ambassadorship. Here they are. Yay! <laughs> so we have a few of them in the room. Jose just walked in from El Salvador. <laughs> and then we have Whitney Lee in the back who's giving a keynote tomorrow. We have Victor Morales and Edith Hukla in the back. Um, and then we're just missing Angel and Krister who were here earlier for Angel's talk. And then Rodolfo Vega who's busy doing introductions in the next room. Ah, there they are. <laughs> Good timing, I think I summoned you. <laughs> Anyway, we really appreciate all their efforts in the local communities because they're really enabling and empowering. Oh, I said Edith. Who else did I miss? <laughs> I got Jose who just walked in. <laughs> um, a, lot of, a lot of these ambassadors create trainings. They have their own GitHub repositories. They're doing these trainings virtually in their community groups. Um, they're translating the, the glossary into Spanish. I mean, they're pretty impressive. And so um, I'm, I'm super excited that we have um, actually seven of them. I didn't update that, <laughs> seven of them here. All right, um, also we're always encouraging diversity. Like I said, we welcome all backgrounds of um, demographics and so Something that we see as a low percentage across the board in the tech industry is um, non-male speakers. And so we're trying to get that higher with the KCD program at least um, and community groups. And this happens to be one that's virtual. So you can attend freely and even offer to speak. Um, but it's at different time zones. Maybe some of you might even want to co-organize with these gals. Um, but I highly suggest kind of getting starting and getting started and help the initiative of enabling um, more women speakers to get on stage and share their expertise. Other resources, if you want to learn more about what's up and coming, latest blog posts um, about the newest projects, etc. There's a Cube Weekly newsletter up there. Um, we also talk about KCDs in there, the up and coming CFPs and events. And then there's also um, a KubeCon discount. It, it is around the corner in Paris, so I'm probably overzealous for putting it on the slide, but um, it's there in case you're able to make it. Um, my shameless plug. Yeah, who doesn't just plan to go to Paris in two weeks? <laughs> All right, well I kept it short and sweet because we're really behind. So um, how about questions, anybody?